you, buckaroos. This is your old pal, Gabby Hayes, coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir -y Bob. Hey, any of you buckaroos ever go out in the yard at night and look up at the heavens and study the stars? Huh? I do. Pretty, ain't they, huh? You know, that kind of reminds me of an old uncle of mine. Telescope Hayes, he was known as. Every night of his life, he'd get his telescope out and just get out there and study them stars. He knowed all the stars. You know, the North Star, and the East Star, and the South and the West Star, all. He knowed every one of them. Well, sir, I'm telling you, he, he got so crazy about stars, that he decided he was going to have a star all by himself. Sounds funny, but he wanted it. So you know what he'd done? He, he packed up his telescope, and he went out to Colorado and climbed right up on top of Pike's Peak. Well, sir, he just sat there and kept watching. Kept watching around like this, and first thing you know, a star come close enough. Well, he took a tremendous jump, you know, and he grabbed a hold of that star. Well, he grabbed it so hard, he tore it loose from the sky. Wind was blowing pretty hard, so it just blowed it out towards the ocean. Kept right on going over the Rocky Mountains, never come down till it got way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Then it dropped in the ocean. Far as I know, it's right there this very day. I reckon it was the first starfish the world has ever known. Yes, sir. Well, our story today is all about a young fella by the name of Billy Carson. You see, he got a letter from a friend of his asking him to hurry home because he, he needed help. Yeah. Think without a brain. <laughs> oh, Fuzz, I'm sorry I was a little hasty with the water, but, but your letter said that you were in trouble. I thought they were trying to burn you out. Uh, I suppose some people are so dumb they can't tell the difference between a house on fire and a pan of burnt biscuits. Sure, but you, you can't hold it against a man just because he doesn't know any better. I guess that's why I wasted so much time getting you out of trouble. Trouble that no intelligent person would have ever gotten into. Okay, what's it this time? Well, it ain't no fault of mine. Yeah? Sit down and I'll tell you. I own a valuable water right. There's a lot of good farmland in my ranch. 
So I got the idea of selling off this farmland to families who want to move in and make homes for themselves. Yeah, I admire your feeling that way, Fred. Now, how does that spell trouble? Well, McAllister owns a big outfit and he wants everything in sight. He wants my water right. And he's dead set against having any settlers locate in the valley. So what? Tell him you don't want to sell your water right and what you do is none of his business. I know, but... Something always happens to folks that talk to McAllister that way. Yeah, well, you go right ahead with your plans. He can't scare us. <laughs> You're sure mighty reckless with my life. Come on, help me get this place cleaned up. From what I hear, you don't seem to understand that I mean what I say. You need some education. <laughs> lesson. Drop around when you can give us another. You'll get a lesson that'll last you the rest of your life, which won't be long. Come on. Hey, uh, that's Jim McAllister. Yeah. Nice neighbor. Yeah. If I had my choice between him and a rattlesnake, Take the snake. Hey, that was quite a greeting Billy got, wasn't it, huh? Looks to me like Jim McAllister's fixing to give him a little mite of trouble. I may be wrong, but I'd be willing to gamble Fuzzy Jones has been rustling my cattle. I sent one of my boys over to Scotty's range. to me. Well, do I have to look like a farmer before I can buy a farm? No, I guess not. We're not running a beauty contest. <laughs> There's a piece of property over here I'd like to talk to you about. Let's have a look. about do you mean to tell me you want to buy this land to farm well if i'm crazy enough to buy it you should worry There's something fishy about it I didn't shoot him, it was someone else. You expect anyone to believe that? Here's his gun, Sheriff. 
He's one of my best boys. The one I said was scouting this range. There's been one shot fired from that gun. Uh, that's impossible. I fired no shot. How do you explain that empty shell? Let's take him in, Sheriff. I'll send someone out from the ranch for his body. We'll do that. Get on that horse. Oh, Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. Somebody else fired that shot. You gotta look around. Now, Get on. on that horse before I bend this over your head. for that catch upon my shirt. <laughs> You're a pretty good actor. I like to knock myself out watching you die. But it ain't funny to me. I gotta play deadly hang that guy. Come on, let's get out of here. standing talking to a fellow and boom, somebody shot him. Yeah? Who fired the shot? I don't know, but the sheriff and Jim McAllister happened along just then and they claim I done it. Funny they just happened along at that time. Seems like McAllister's having the sheriff play his game. Now you watch your step, young fella. I don't like that kind of talk. Come on, get in there. Be smart. Hit the road. You'll do yourself no good hanging around this valley. Maybe I can give you an argument on that. I don't argue. When I say something, that's it. escaping from jail meant just two things to Billy Carson. One, he had to find him. And two, he had to get him back in jail until he could find the dead man who really wasn't dead. Help yourself. Where's my horse? Uh, over there for the rocks. Oh. Back up now. Here my lunch pile.
better stay put up here in the hills. McAllister knows the truth about that killing. I'll get it out of him somehow. Eat or talk. I'll try to do them both at the same time. But I can yearn for Matilda. Yearning for Matilda, huh? Well, she'll keep. You have no time for romance. That neck of yours out of danger. I want some information. I ain't telling you nothing. You'll tell me how McAllister framed that murderer in Fuzzy. I'll beat your head off. Start talking. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, maybe this will help you. Get What's going on here? I found Fuzzy Jones and he helped him get away. You're trying hard to get yourself into trouble. Fuzzy isn't guilty. We'll let the courts decide that. You ain't careful, you would find yourself in jail right with him. Come on, get your horse. We'll try and catch up with him. description, you look like the man he's supposed to have killed. Well, suppose I am a... Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. No. You're the livest looking corpse I ever saw. What do you mean, corpse? You heard what I said. Oh, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Suppose I am. Let's take a little ride to town. Let Fuzzy have a look at you. I am not going any place with you. And the best thing you can do is get off of this ranch. He wasn't killed in the fight. He was murdered. 
I suspected that Fuzzy Jones was rustling my cattle. So I sent Ed over to investigate. That was the last time I ever saw him alive. Ed was a friend of mine, and I'm going to see to it that his murderer gets what's coming to him. About a trip to town. Have you changed your mind? You'll wish you never got mixed up in this business. You could be wrong. Get on your horse. sure that it don't happen again. No. Be no mob law in this town while I'm sure. The prisoner will be given a fair trial. If he's found guilty, he'll be hung. For some of you people down in that crowd, I've called my friends. So help me, I'll blast the first one that tries to rush this door. Now be smart. Don't be fools. Call on you in the name of the law. Go on about your business. I killed. He ain't much alive, but he ain't dead either. That's right, Fuzz. There's your ghost. Untie the sheriff. Sheriff, lock these two men up. I'll think of some charge to bring against them. Well, that was pretty good yarn, wasn't it, huh? Yes, sir. You know, I thought for a minute they was going to string that fella up when they throwed that rope at him there. Oh, speaking of ropes, you know, that kind of reminds me of an old uncle. Lariat Hayes, he was no as. He wasn't just an ordinary roper. He was one of them fancy ropers, you know, with the rodeos. Nothing for him to spin all four or five ropes at the same time, one with each hand and maybe two or three on each toe, you know, and one on top of his head. Of course, when you're a fancy roper like that, you know, you, you've got to do a lot of practicing. He practiced all. He'd rope anything he seen. Well, he was riding along one day, and he seen a big rock, you know, up on top of the hill. He decided to rope it. So he roped it and jumped on his horse, off his horse, rather, and yanked. Well, sir, he never budged that rock. Not a bit. He gave her another yank. Made him mad. Couldn't budge it. So you know what he done? He just went up there on the hill and he started to wind that rope around that rock until all that was left was just a little piece about that long. And then he gave it a real yank. Well, sir, it started to spin. It spun around there for about 70 hours and four days before it stopped. Turned out to be the first top the world has ever known. I reckon that's just about all for today, buckaroos. 
Well, I'll be back next week with another rip roaring western yarn. <laughs> Your turn, tootin'. Yes, sir, Bob. Thank <laughs> you.